I have given everything I see, all the meaning that it has for me. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Modern Mystics. And here today, it feels like it's going to be somewhat of an extension or continuation of the last show. Um, the last show, I talked about service and how important it is to be giving and in function and in service. And this week, I just wanted to share some experiences that I had. And, um, you know, very practical, again, very practical application of service and giving and experiences because we had this retreat and it was a five day retreat which you heard a little bit on the other shows about that it was like a spanish retreat and uh today's the last day it's amazing how it just flew by you know and retreats are always such a vibrant time and everyone's like in full giving mode and it feels really good and everyone's like so happy um and usually that's the case and then there was this <laughs> there's this one day where I just felt like terrible during the retreat and I was like, okay, what's going on early on in the retreat? And yeah, basically, you know, the Holy Spirit gives us very specific functions and guidance when we follow his plan. And you know, I I'm here based at La Casa de Milagros, not literally here, but at the other house we have. And basically my function is to support um, you know, Anna's basically over the house and my function is to support Anna. And basically the retreat came and she was over the retreat and then my function again, support Anna. And something strange happened in the mind where it just made a decision for littleness. And I know I've been saying like, this is the year of magnitude. So it's like, I've been noticing there's a lot of flipping back and forth. You know, it's like, okay, we're in the magnitude and then, oh, the ego gets scared and fear comes up, switch back to littleness. And it's, it's a convincing job by the Holy Spirit that he has to do for us to show us that it is safe and it, it does feel good to pick the magnitude. It's like, we know you're addicted to littleness. You made the world in littleness, but we're going to show you another way. And basically, yeah, a decision for littleness was made in the beginning of the retreat where, you know, I somehow forgot my function of supporting supporting Anna and I got caught up in part of my function with like the tech for the retreat which was doing the mixer and the audio and so what happened is you know it's like the course lesson let me not forget my function and so I, I did forget that day and then so I was just on the mixer that day and doing the sound for the retreat in the gathering and then, um, and then Carolina was next to me who was passing the mic around and it just felt horrible. You know, <laughs> like something just felt really horrible. I was like, what is this? What is this? And, and it, it's like, for me, a lot of the times when just something feels off and I don't know what it is, it's like basically a hundred percent of the time it's like function related, you know, and by that, it just means guidance. It's like, Holy Spirit, what would you have me do? You know? Am I supposed to be doing something else? It's almost always it's that. Unless something's coming up, but it wasn't really. So basically what happened is um, by the end of that day, you know, and then there was this thought. I was like, retreats are supposed to be vibrant. What's going on? So anyways, by the end of that day, there was another decision made in the mind to choose the correction. And I remember I was just feeling so bad and I was just praying, okay, okay, Holy Spirit, decide for God for me because I have too much resistance right now. I'm just like not feeling good. And I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the solution is. So Holy Spirit, decide for God for me. And then later I had a joining with Anna and, and basically it got clear that, yeah, um, I have a lot of mind energy and this function of just being on the tech during the session, during the gatherings, is not fulfilling my full function. That was just that was just one part of it. And actually there were yeah, there were so many shifts that happened after that that I was like, wow, it's like, yeah, I wasn't fulfilling my function and that's why I wasn't happy. You know, my function and my happiness are one. And that's always the case. So basically there were shifts where I was like, okay, Carolina, now you're gonna be on the mixer 
Actually, you're going to do all the tech. I'm going to be over the full room and the tech and um, communicating with all the different members of the team. And then uh, Melissa is going to pass the mic, who actually speaks Spanish, so she knows when the next person wants to speak. So everything, like, all of a sudden, like, made sense. You know, everything started to click. And I was like, okay, we're fulfilling our function now, basically. And so the next day was the complete opposite. It was beautiful. It was like, okay, this is, this is how giving is supposed to feel like. Like, this is giving. Um, we found our function. Let me not forget my function. I remember my function. We all clicked into our positions. And then, and then, you know, I was basically, I had an overview of the session. I was looking at the room and then the tech, and then it was a lot more for my mind, which was perfect because I had so much mind energy and it had to go somewhere. And the Holy Spirit uses these projects and service to focus this mind energy in a helpful direction, in a way that it's giving, you know, because we, we we all have a lot of mind energy, and if it's not focused in giving mode, then what's going to happen? Then that miracle impulse just gets distorted, and then goes through the ego's lens, and then goes into getting mode, and it's like, what can I get, get, get? And then, of course, we all know through getting, there's never any satisfaction. So basically, yeah, what happened is, okay, let me not forget my function. This is my function. And then it's like the mind energy was then focused in, a, in the proper way. It's very specific guidance by the Holy Spirit. I had a specific function in this session. And I was just sitting there and it was a totally different experience. I just felt like, wow, like I, I felt like I was in total giving mode. And I, I was just like, you know, I, even in the form, I, it wasn't seemingly even doing anything I was just I had my mind on okay tech is good and this, this is good and that's good and I wasn't even seemingly doing anything but it was just there was just this giving happening like giving just happening and it just felt so beautiful it was like I don't know you know you can't really describe it but I was just extending like forever and and yeah I was like wow I could just like disappear right now like it was like so beautiful it's like my it is like my function and my happiness are one. That was like a practical example of I was not in my function. I was doing something different than what the guidance was, and I didn't feel good. Okay, that's very clear. And then it's like, let me not forget my function. So then I found my function. I remembered, and then I was in my function. And then it's like my function and my happiness are one. I had a full experience of that. There was no more lack. There was no need to get anything it was just pure giving 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 mode and so last night speaking of giving we watched like the perfect movie is groundhog day and i've seen it several times but this time it was like a totally different experience and what happened was yeah i just saw the movie completely differently and i've seen it so many times but this time it was basically like um I forget his name, I think it's Phil, but the main character, um, basically he's stuck in a loop where every day repeats, and there might be some spoilers, but I think a lot of you guys have seen this movie. Every day he's stuck in this loop, right? A complete loop, and he doesn't know how to get out. The day just repeats itself. At 6 a.m., it's the same day over and over and over and over, and he can't get out, and he seems to be stuck. So he's basically just in survival mode. He doesn't know what to do with his life. And so he starts off trying to get, you know, that's like, we all seem to start off with the ego trying to get because we're listening to the ego and the ego is a belief in lack. So what's the ego going to tell us? It's going to tell us you need to get because you're lacking and you need to get until you're complete. And obviously that's a deception because there's no completion in getting because it just keeps reinforcing lack. Because if you need to get something from outside of yourself, then inherently you're just saying that I'll never be complete because there's a hole that's lacking that I need to get something and nothing in form will ever complete us. So basically he started off in that getting mode and so he tried everything. You know, he tried to manipulate things. He robbed banks. He found um, like girlfriends and this and that and uh, yeah, he stole a lot of money and and he basically tried to convince this one girl to sleep with him and it, it wasn't working and 
his life was miserable and he tried to even go to restaurants and have like uh, two tons of chocolate and donuts and everything and nothing was working. So eventually he just got completely depressed. And, and yeah, actually another thing he tried to do was act out the authority problem basically. And you know, like get drunk and drive cars and go to jail and it's like nothing was satisfying him. So eventually he hit complete rock bottom and he went suicidal and he's like, okay, you know, obviously all the, all the roads of this world lead to death. It's like when we follow the ego, it always leads to death. It's like even what seems to be the most, um, yeah, successful careers or whatever, it all leads to death in the end when we're following the ego. So if the ego leads us to whatever, a lot of money, or beautiful women or whatever it might be through that getting then it always leads to death because the ego is a death wish so basically basically he played that out for a while and he just kept killing himself over and over and over and of course he couldn't die because the day just kept looping and and so basically yeah he just completely gave up and there must have been some point of surrender in his mind because after he saw that getting is not going to get me anywhere and it's just a loop. That's what, that's what it is. It's a loop of getting over and over and over, never complete. And then you just die. And then the next lifetime over and over and over. And so he's like, okay, there must be another way. There must be another way. So throughout his day, there would be so many moments and opportunities where he could give and extend the miracle. And, and in the beginning, he was just too, he was listening to the ego too much. So he was stuck in this getting and he was just brushing off all these beautiful opportunities to extend the miracle and to give from his heart. He was just brushing them off and he, he, he just had a bad attitude. You know, he, he had this attitude of, no, it's, everything's about me. I just need to get and I'm lacking. Listen, I'm a victim, okay? You know, that was like kind of his attitude. And then he played that out so much, you know, killed himself eventually and realized this isn't going to work. So I need another way. And so... Yeah, a miracle happened, the shift in perception in his mind, because all of a sudden, you know, these different opportunities that he was brushing away to give, um, like walking past the homeless guy and be like, no, nope, sorry, I'm too lacking. I don't have anything to give you. And of course, giving isn't isn't about form. The Holy Spirit can use form in giving, but it's not necessarily about form. But he just uses all those opportunities to bless actually, and, and to give the miracle and to keep giving, giving, giving. So he had like a thousand opportunities to, to flip the ship around, to go from getting to giving. And so instead he gave the homeless person a lot of money and every day he would catch this kid who fell out of a tree. And, and, um, and this one guy, his, his friend from high school, he didn't really like him, but uh, someone from high school would come up to him and try to sell him insurance every day. And instead he said he bought all the insurance and he gave him a huge hug and he just extended this love to him. And his friend was even like, fear of love came up. He's like, oh, okay. And, and then, you know, all these blessings and he just helped, helped so many people, but really he just switched his attitude from getting to giving. And so he was just in that giving mode and blessing everyone and you know in the course it says when you bless yourself you bless the world and so yeah it was just continuous blessings and just giving 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 and then from there even the things that he was um, chasing after even the things that that were sought after were given to him you know so there was no sacrifice I know there's like this misconception that giving is sacrifice but of course that comes from the ego the belief in lack spirit just gives forever and forever and it's limitless and unlimited and there is no lack because giving and receiving are one and so basically he just has this experience that wow when i'm in this giving mode and i just keep giving 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 then everything just comes to me you know it's like there was this girl he was trying to chase and trying to get from get sex whatever and kiss her and all this stuff and it never worked and it just felt terrible and it was just coming from lack and you know he just stepped into his function of extending 
and giving. And he had all these ho holy encounters and blessing everyone and just being in full service mode and being used by the Holy Spirit, completely done through. His body, the purpose for the body was completely shifted, given to the Holy Spirit. And then, and then, yeah, it's like my function and my happiness are one. So from there, he just got really happy. And it had nothing to do with the form. He was just in complete giving mode and he was so happy and he was just... Yeah, it's like at the end, end of the movie, there's a beautiful scene where like there's like this party and then this girl he was chasing, she goes into the party and there's like this amazing piano music happening and she finds out that it, it's actually him who's playing the piano. And she was even surprised. She was like, wow, like I can't believe it. Like this is the guy who's had this terrible attitude, like playing the piano and he's so happy and you can just feel that he's just, extending you know extending to everyone extending through the form of this playing the piano and so yeah he was just so happy and just emanating this happiness and giving and then and then yeah from there the, what he was chasing like this girl just naturally just came in after he was happy and fulfilling his function it's like the relationship came in and uh, without him having to do anything for it and then yeah they just spent some time together and then it was like by the end of the day they were just naturally in the same bed together and you know they slept together and then the wake woke up the next day and she was in his bed with him still and that was a complete shock to him because he had woken up a thousand times in that same bed uh in that loop in the loop of getting but it's like at the end of the movie, he broke that loop of getting through giving. So he completely broke that loop. The day wasn't repeating anymore. He was just a completely different person, so to speak, and everything was changed. And it was like, it was, a, it was a happy dream. It was like the real world. It was like true perception, like David talked about in the last show. A single purpose will unify perception. He had the single purpose of giving and being in function and it's like all perception got unified all these people that used to hate him and he hated them and everyone was just so happy together and then yeah basically the loop of getting just got broken and he even ended up with the girl that he always felt this deep connection with and and it's like the mind was healed and it was it was just a beautiful example yeah just a beautiful example of service and how Giving is really the key, like giving is the answer. Like giving is the answer to, to everything actually. And it says in the course, I was just reading it somewhere, that you know, it's like this course is a means to show you that giving, that there's no sacrifice with giving. And it said something about like how how crucial it is basically that you you need to be in this giving mode like it's like we're not going to wake up until we're in giving mode because why because if we're not giving then we're getting and getting is lack and lack is the ego so you can't wake up with that in in your mind so yeah that's why i feel like it's so important you know it's like it's like, let's stop this deception. It's like nothing we've done has worked for us to like fix this emptiness, this lack, this void. It's like there's only one way out of this loop and it's through guidance. You know, it's, it's through following the guidance and, and, and giving the body over to the Holy Spirit to be completely in service. However, the Holy Spirit will want the body to be used. Like, it might look different for different people. You know, it's a highly indiv individualized curriculum. So it's not like everyone needs to come to some kind of spiritual community. It's like, what is the guidance for you? You know, it's like highly individualized. How does the Holy Spirit want to use you to give and extend the miracle so that you can reinforce it in your own mind? You know, how does the Holy Spirit want to use the body to extend to keep giving, to wash away this belief in lack and wash away the belief in sacrifice too. And um, David told me something really beautiful about this whole topic. 
over a year ago. Basically, he was saying all of this about how you need to be in function and you know the mind energy going in a helpful direction. And then this is what he says after that. David said, and then from all that it seems and then from all that it seems like the things that were sought after as externals, as things in the world, it seems more like they start to show up as I'm willing to be used and serve a plan that's the highest plan, then things start to show up in my awareness that are almost like answers, like God smiling and saying, oh, look at this. And they come in ways where they weren't sought after, but they were like given or added on. And then you have a sense of lightness with it because it's not like you did anything to get them. They just showed up and then they show up and they show up and they show up and there's something helpful. I think that's part of what this whole bottom up approach is like Jason's show from the bottom up. It's like we have to be convinced using the things that we perceive in time and space. You know, it's like the Holy Spirit uses all the symbols we believe in in time and space to convince us that there's no sacrifice in awakening. Like that's so important because a lot of people, you know, they don't want to follow the guidance they don't want to give because they're like, well, that's a sacrifice. I'm going to lose everything I like and, you know, et cetera. But, but it's like, no, David's saying, actually, you fulfill your function. Your function will make you happy. These other things won't actually make you happy. I know you still believe that and that's fine, but just go into your function. You'll get happy and even the things that you believe in will be used as part of this convincing job from the Holy Spirit who's using the things that we perceive in time and space. It's not like we just throw, throw away everything in our mind and get thrust into heaven. You know, it's like, no, this is actually a very gentle path. Like I've been realizing more and more even recently how gentle this all actually is. It's like extremely gentle. It's actually amazing. I, I used to think... You know, no, I have to fight the ego and just give everything up now and get hurled into reality. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like there's this idea in the mind that we have to really struggle, really struggle until we wake up. And it's like, no, the Course is actually saying, actually, it's very gentle. It's like, you're not going to wake up really until the happy dream. And how do we get to the happy dream? It's through this giving you know, being used in the highest plan. And then the things start to show up in my, in your awareness that are just added on in a light way. You know, you don't have to chase after them. Um, yeah. And that shows up in many ways, actually. Even the phone I'm using to, to read this, it's like this, this used to be like some kind of idol for me. You know, it's like, I really lo loved it tech you know I, I really love tech so it looks different for everyone of course and then I was like I really want this phone whatever and it was some kind of idol and then I just went into my function and then eventually I just realized actually who cares it's just a phone and then <laughs> so it just came in so natural I didn't have to do anything really didn't have to do anything and then it just came in and now it's being used as part of the highest plan you know it's like it's part of my function and it feels so beautiful because I didn't have to do anything to get it, you know, myself. It just, Holy Spirit just brought it in. And, and yeah. So, yeah, it really is a convincing job. It really is this convincing job. So it does take a trust to the Holy Spirit. It does take this trust like, okay, I'm really trusting you. Like I do still believe in sacrifice and I still like things in the world. And, but I want to be happy and I just want to follow you and I can't chase these things in the, in the world anymore. So I'm just going to trust that, hey, Holy Spirit, if I follow you, that there's not going to be any sacrifice. And that's the trust that's needed, you know, take the leap of faith. Um, and you really do need that trust. And the Holy Spirit will then convince you that there is no sacrifice and that my function and my happiness are one. It's like, don't take my word for it. You know, it's like, try it out. You know, it's like, because it, it really is an experience. And that's how the Holy Spirit's going to convince us through it. 
and experience, not just through words. Um, just like my experience at the, the retreat that I was talking about. And, and yeah, it's not as much as we can to stay vig vigilant against the deception that, you know, the ego always provides a solution to the lack, always. So it's like when this lack is really strong in the mind, ego is going to be like, yeah, listen, I got an answer for you. Just get out that bucket of ice cream, you know, like get out uh, whatever, go, go have sex or um, yeah, you just need to make more money. Just find a better job. You know, it's like the ego is going to give all the solutions and they're all going to lead to death. You know, it's like we don't need to be in that loop anymore. It's like there is another way. And it's the Holy Spirit's way of giving and service and fulfilling your function. Yeah, like it is an experience. My function and my happiness are one. And until then, it's just a trust. And okay, Holy Spirit, none of my ways have worked. Nothing I've done has worked. So I'm just going to trust you. And I'm going to keep following you. And I do expect experiences and miracles to show me that I'm in the right direction to convince me that, that this really is my happiness and that I'm not giving anything up. Yeah, so it's an experience. You can pray for an experience because when you pray for an experience, it will happen. And actually, I just rem remembered something. During the retreat, I don't know if it was during or right before. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, there's a volunteer right now who's part of the retreat, who's helping out with the retreat. And, and he's working in the kitchen. And I went up to him and I was like, hey, how are you doing? And he said, um, just hanging in, it, hanging in there. And I was like, we're not here to just hang in there. Come on. <laughs> it's like, we came here for awakening. We came here for happiness. We didn't come here to just hang in there. Like, let's go, let's go connect. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, we just connected. And basically he's like, I got no sleep last night, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, you know, none of that really matters. It always comes back to desire. So I just reminded him, I was like, yeah, just remember why you're doing this. Remember, remember what it's for. Remember why you're in there washing dishes. It's like, you're not actually there just to wash dishes for the sake of helping a retreat. You know, it's like, it's not about that. This is about awakening. You're washing dishes to be happy because that's your function right now. That's why you're doing it. So before you go back in there, make a prayer, set the goal and say to yourself, you know, you can say to yourself, what kind of experience do I want? When I go back in this kitchen and I start washing dishes, what kind of experience do I really want? And then, he, and then I asked him that. And then he said, I want to feel, I don't remember the exact words, but he said, inspired, you know, um, excited, awake. I don't know what he said, but anyways, he just told me what his prayer was. And then he, and then I was like, okay, great. Just remember, that's the reason why you're washing dishes. You're washing dishes to have that experience. There's no other reason. There's no other reason why you're going to wash dishes right now. That's the purpose. That's the reason. So what happened was he went back and he went back to his function of washing dishes and et cetera. And he literally got zero hours of sleep, no sleep at all. And I was like, does it matter? You know, the Holy Spirit's going to use you and that's your happiness. And so, yeah, he went back to his function. And then later that day, he's like, Andy, I had a miracle. And I was like, tell us. And he said, I did not feel tired at all. And I felt every single thing that I prayed for before going back into that kitchen or washing the dishes. I felt inspired. I felt joyful. I felt happy. I felt awake. I didn't feel tired at all today. And that's such a miracle because I didn't get any sleep at all. And I was like, wow, this is such a miracle. Like this is the Holy Spirit convincing us that his plan is really in our highest good. And that really there is no sacrifice and all these beliefs don't mean anything. So yeah, we're out of time, but thank you guys so much. And I had a really great time with you guys. 
And I'll see you in two weeks after the online retreat next weekend. So thank you.